Hey friends, David Lightbringer here, still on vacation, but there is of course breaking news today. Today on the Day of the Dragon, as decreed by HBO and the powers that be. But of course that big news comes from none other than Amelia Clark, who has confirmed the Jon Snow show. Uh, it's an interview with Amelia Clark, and I'll just read here. It says, in response to a story in The Hollywood Reporter that Kit Harrington will reprise his role as Jon Snow in a Game of Thrones sequel, Clark says, he has told me about it, and I know it exists. It's happening. Then, perhaps realizing she may have said more than she should have, she adds, it's been created by Kit, as far as I can understand, so he's in it from the ground up. So what you will be watching, hopefully, if it happens, is certified by Kit Harrington. Okay, so there you go. Uh, here on Day of the Dragon, we've got confirmation of the Jon Snow show, and it comes from the mother of dragons herself, Amelia Clark. And as she says, she knows it exists, and it's happening. Sounds pretty authoritative, so there it is. It's confirmed. Uh, this doesn't mean the show's been greenlit, of course. This just means that the, it's in development. There's no filming, no pilot, no casting. So it's in development. Uh, yes. Hey, guys, just cutting in uh, real quick with my dog son, Fred. Fred of the floppy ears. Uh, even more breaking news. George R. R. Martin himself this morning, as right as I was editing this video up for release, has also confirmed the Jon Snow show. And I'll just read right from his Not A Blog entry. Yes, there is a Jon Snow show in development. The Hollywood Reporter story was largely correct, and I would expect no less from James Hibbard. I have dealt with a lot of reporters over the past few years, and Hibbard is one of the very best. And then George goes on to talk about how James Hibbard is a respectable reporter, and he checks his sources, and The Hollywood Reporter is very credible. So for the people who said uh, maybe this was wrong or maybe that Hibbard was unreliable, uh, George says Hibbard is very credible, so duly noted. Anyway, George continues, Our working title for the show is Snow. Really? We can't do better than Snow? Anyways. He goes on to say that there's four live-action successor shows in development at HBO. We knew about three of those. 10,000 Ships, The Sea Snake, a.k.a. The Nine Voyages, uh, The Duncan Egg Show, or perhaps called The Hedge Knight or Night of the Seven Kingdoms. And then he says, Snow has been in development for almost as long as those other three, but for whatever reason it was never announced, and it never leaked until now. But yes, it is true. This was not an official announcement from HBO, so it seems there was another leak. There's not much more I can tell you, not until HBO gives me a green light. And then here's the really interesting part. It seems as though Amelia Clark has already mentioned that Snow was Kit's idea in a recent interview. So that part is out. Yes, it was Kit Harrington who brought the idea to us. I cannot tell you the names of the writers or showrunners, since that has not been cleared for release yet. But Kit brought them in too, his own team, and they are terrific. Well, that's definitely interesting. Uh, I hope to hear more about Kit's team of showrunners. Uh, yeah, I've got no idea what that amounts to or what that means in actual fact. All four of these successor shows are still in the script stage. Outlines and treatments have been written and approved, scripts have been written, notes have been given, second and third drafts have been written. So far, that's all. This is the way television works. Please note, nothing has been greenlit yet, and there's no guarantee when or if it will be on any of these shows. And then he closes by saying that he, of course, hopes that all four of them make it to the air, but expects that they probably won't. So that's pretty much it. It doesn't really change anything that I've been saying on this video that you're watching and are about to continue watching, uh, but it does confirm it. So Amelia and George have both confirmed it. It's definitely happening, without a doubt. And there was a little more extra on Kit's involvement. But again, I don't know who his showrunners are or what that's going to mean. So on with the video. So as I said on my recent live stream about the Jon Snow show, uh, Let It Snow, Jon Snow King of the North, I'm not sure what it's going to be called. I'm definitely skeptical. And, and if you just hate this idea, I, I don't blame you. I, I understand. It does seem like it's got some uh, uphill sledding to do, some challenges. But I am a writer, and of course, as a YouTuber, I'm here to cover all of the Game of Thrones, A Song of Ice and Fire material. So I thought I would just do a little exercise and ask myself, how would I approach this as a writer? Uh, you know, obviously it's, it's one thing to be skeptical, but if it's, if it's happening, then we might as well think about it. So I've come up with a list of six questions that, uh, six big questions that everyone has about this show and, and how they might be answered. So here we go. Number one, will Danny be resurrected? Uh, this is the biggest question with any show in the post Game of Thrones timeline. What are they going to do about Danny? It's basically going to be the elephant in the room for this Jon Snow show, especially if the title is something centered around Jon and the show is supposed to be centered around Jon. There's really just not room for Danny to be resurrected because if Danny was resurrected, then it would be the Danny show. Danny 
is obviously the biggest character in the show. And if it's going to be a John show, then it's hard to see how they would fit a Danny resurrection in sort of around John's plot. It would overshadow everything. And in my opinion, there's really, if you didn't like the ending, uh, the Hitler Danny, the evil Danny ending of the show, as I did not, and most of the fandom did not, of course, I really just don't think there's a way to fix it, I guess is the point. Uh, they ruined it by having Danny go against her statements about the responsibilities of a ruler, kings and queens being created to protect the weak and, you know, those who can't protect themselves and all that. And I just don't think that resurrecting Danny would fix that. Uh, a zombie Danny, like, what would there be for her to do? It would just probably be more violence. Like, seeing Danny lead an army of Valoris to invade Westeros and punish the Starks, I mean, I guess that'd be fun, but it, that's not really a show. And it definitely doesn't fix the problem of turning Danny into a mass murderer. Like, that, that bridge is crossed. Really don't think they can fix that. However, any show about John obviously should explore John's guilt. I mean, it, they can't just ignore it, right? They can't just have a John show and have him never address how he feels about the fact that he murdered his true love or was convinced to murder his true love. Yeah, they, that needs to be explored, obviously. Um, Danny's legacy with the people should be explored, too. We're going to talk about where the show is going to be set, but if it's anywhere in Westeros or even in the north with the Wildlings, we definitely need to know what people think of the fact that Danny sort of saved the world and then uh, I killed a bunch of people like a few weeks later. Uh, and uh, there's also the fact that uh, a lot of people want revenge for Danny, like Grey Worm or, you know, anyone from Essos that she led and inspired thousands of people, uh, the Relorists. From Essos's point of view, like they sent someone that they looked at as a demigod <laughs> over to Westeros and then she saved the world and then got murdered like a couple weeks later. So a lot of people might uh, have questions about that. Yeah, definitely Grey Worm and, and all of the Unsullied and Dothraki and all of her. So Anyways, so as you can see um, from my collection of comments here, the Danny issue is the elephant in the room. It's the thing that the Jon Snow show is going to have to sort of deal with. This is the first big challenge for the show to even exist. But uh, And actually, at the end of that interview, there's another comment. Um, the interview goes on and says, which raises the question, would she, Amelia Clark, ever consider appearing in a spinoff to Game of Thrones, or is she done with dragons? No, I think I'm done, she says firmly and laughs. Amelia Clark is ready to move on. Amelia, you know, even without hearing that quote, I would have guessed that Amelia's done. She's, I don't think she enjoyed the Danny ending any more than I did, uh, and many of you did, uh, from her comments in public. So it does seem like Danny is done, but who knows? Maybe that's a smokescreen. She is pretty tight with Kit, so maybe if Kit is part of creating the, the story of the show, which is a whole another thing worth talking about, maybe maybe Kit calls in a favor and they get Danny to come. But really, I just think Danny would overshadow everything. And this show probably is going to center around John, go in a different direction, and just probably explore his emotional fallout from becoming a Queen Slayer and Kinslayer as well. So, yeah. So question number two is when... And where will the show be set? Will the show pick up shortly after Game of Thrones? Or perhaps more likely with a time skip? And the more I think about it, at least like a 10 year time skip would make a lot of sense. That would create some distance between Game of Thrones and this show, kind of let it breathe, give us time for new problems to have developed that John needs to tackle. And of course, John was supposed to be about 19 or 20 at the end of the story, and Kit is older than that and can easily play someone up to maybe, I don't know, 35 or 40. So there you go. A time skip definitely makes the most sense to me. But who knows? Maybe they'll just pick up, you know, like a year or two after. Uh, then th the bigger question is where? Is this show going to be north of the wall only, or is it going to go back into Westeros? Is it going to even go over into Essos? Is John going to explore his Targaryen heritage, which he didn't seem to care much about. Will it even go to Unknown Lands? Of course, we know Arya was sailing west last we heard, so perhaps Jon's story will tie into hers, but uh, really the big issue here is how far into Westeros are we going to go? And that leads me to my third question, which is, will this basically be a Game of Thrones reboot, or will it really be a Jon-centric show? Unless we stay basically north of the Wall, we're gonna start to need some of the original characters, right? Uh, the first person we would need to be Sansa. So maybe John, maybe this is a story that is north of the wall with the wildlings, and then just in the north with House Stark, some other northern houses, maybe the Boltons rise again, something like that. And then the next thing I would think of is, of course, we'd need to know what's going on with King Bran. 
I would think that we'd actually need to see King Bran, but maybe he's just sort of off in the distance. He's not really doing anything interesting, and he's just mentioned tangentially some of the time. But there's also the issue of Sam. Sam Tarly, of course, has the deepest emotional connection to John, and he's down in King's Landing. He's uh, looks like he's the Grand Maester. He's writing down the Game of Thrones, the story of you know, what we just saw. And theoretically, he would be essentially writing down all the knowledge, all the history that Bran has in his little Bran brain when he did the the WeirdNet download and absorbed all the history. So, because of course we saw, you know, to check on RLJ, he just sort of tilted back and scanning, scanning. And then, oh yes, uh, yes, uh, Rhaegar, Rhaegar, that's the guy. In any case, so Sam is down there in King's Landing with King Bran, and this is basically you know, the best reason to bring in a King's Landing plot thread to the Jon Snow show is the emotional connection that Jon has with Bran, but even even more so Sam, really. Sam is almost more of a brother to Jon than Bran is, and Bran's a little, well, he's kind of a robot now, so. And then if Jon goes back into Westeros, there's also the question of Jon being sort of quasi-exiled, self-exiled, it's not made clear, but he did commit uh, regicide and kinslaying, and then he sort of just buggered off to the north, so he's Seems like kind of persona non grata. I'm not sure. They'll have to deal with that. And there's still the question of just how the realm views him leaving the Watch. Is he a Night's Watch commander who went to war? Is he perceived as breaking his vows? Or do people know that he's undead? Which is <laughs> question number four. Do people think John is dead? This question was never resolved on Game of Thrones. Whether or not people think that he broke his vows and just left the wall to become King of the North, or if he by way of being a zombie, having died uh, and then been resurrected, he's actually released from his vows. This is one of the most annoying things about the John part of Game of Thrones is just, we never knew whether people thought of him as being resurrected or being, like I said, a, a uh, oathbreaker of the Night's Watch. So they'll have to answer that for sure. And it's not too late to give John some extra magical abilities. He was resurrected by R'hllor. He should be able to light his sword on fire, just like Beric, even though he fought right next to Beric and watched him do it. He never tried it when he was fighting the others of the White Walkers. So yes, there's still time to, to fix that, I guess. And if you think about it, like the issue was never raised when they wanted to make him King of the North and then King. Like, can John have kids? Is he a zombie? So again, you can see it's kind of a mess that the show made. The Jon Snow show would have to sort that out for sure. And of course, if he is understood to be resurrected, then you know, are people afraid of him? Is he perceived as kind of like a god? Or is he just, hey, it's John. Hey, hey, John, it's the guy with the wolf. That, that cool guy who sort of hung out with us and fought the war with us and stuff. Yeah, all right. And then question number five I alluded to earlier, will this be an Arya and Jon thing? Of course, Arya was sailing west to see what lies west, kind of kind of reap a cheap status, if you will, if you know that reference. So perhaps John will come with Arya. If the show's picking up right after Game of Thrones, they'll sail west, and n none of the show will take place in Westeros. But that's, that's less likely. What I think is more likely is that there'll be a time skip, and then maybe Arya will come back to Westeros after years of journeying in foreign lands. And this could even you know, be the thing that gets the plot of the Jon Snow show started. Arya shows up with some sort of new information or a new problem. This gets Jon, you know, coming out of retirement and needing to go back to Westeros to talk to Bran about something magical or, well, you can see how, how that could go. There's a lot of potential there with Arya returning from a long voyage. And of course, Macy Williams has said that she would be interested in reprising the role of Arya, albeit an aged up Arya. Uh, so Arya is definitely a character I would look for in the Jon Snow show. And basically, if I had to make a list of characters that we already know that might be in the Jon show. Obviously, Tormund is right up there at the top, uh, but after that, it would be Sansa, Bran, Sam, and Arya, so. And then saving the best for last, of course, number six, will the White Walkers be a thing? This was, of course, one of the biggest letdowns of Game of Thrones, the way the White Walker plot just ended very suddenly and then just didn't matter anymore. I'm not gonna go into all that, I've addressed that before, but this, unlike the evil Danny turn, which I would consider the bad, you know, part of the bad ending, I said that couldn't be fixed. Well, the White Walker thing definitely could be fixed. 
For starters, uh, maybe killing the Night King only bought us some time. Maybe there's more White Walkers or even more Night Kings out there. And this is just, you know, kind of a cyclical thing where you kill the White Walkers, you beat them back. We ended their attempt at creating a long night, but they could definitely rise again. Like I said, there could be more White Walkers out there. There could be a different Night King. After all, Night King is just a regular man who was, you know, injected with dragon glass by the children of the forest, uh, you know, while he was tied to a weirwood tree, and somehow that made a Night King. So if there's any more children of the forest out there, maybe they make a new Night King. Maybe one of those nasty cannibal fens, you know, gets transformed. Or maybe there's even like a, an evil tribe of children of the forest. Shout out to Quinn's ideas. One of his, like, I don't know, this theory might be 10 years old by now. One of his oldest theories was that there would have been separate factions of children of the forest and that maybe one of the factions were the ones that were responsible for creating the White Walkers, while another faction is the one trying to help the humans. On the show, it seemed to be the same one, the same children of the forest, uh, 8,000 years old, apparently. But that's something they could play fast and loose with. So maybe there's other children of the forest out there. But the most interesting version of the White Walkers coming back by far would be Night's Queen. Dun, dun, dun. Yes. This would be the thing that would get some of us really excited about this show. I can't lie. If this was all going towards a Night's Queen figure, somebody that's even older than Night's King, maybe she is a child of the forest or a green man or just some very old sorceress like Melisandre who's using the power of ice instead of fire. Anything like this would be cool. And honestly, Night's King was pretty disappointing. He didn't even talk. So if you had a Night's Queen and she was talking and doing even more magic than we saw before. I mean, if you're going to go back to the well with the White Walkers, you know, I don't think you would just do run the same thing again. You want to make it bigger. You want to make it worse, more intimidating. I think the Night's Queen, this would be the way to do it, to raise the White Walker threat a level. And then, of course, this time around, we can go into that lore. We can use that knowledge of Bran, seeing the Night King created by the children, the dragon glass involvement, the weirwood involvement. There's, you know, those obelisks were never explained that surrounded that weirwood tree. There is a ton here that they can go back and explore that all of us would be pretty excited about. So that's probably my biggest hope for a Jon Snow show, short of a Danny resurrection, which is, like I said, pretty unlikely. That's what I would want is White Walkers. Give us the real White Walker lore. Don't shortchange it. Make it the focal point. That's how this show would succeed, in my opinion. So closing thoughts, um, Kit being involved, that's kind of curious. Um, maybe some of you who follow uh, the actors' opinions of the show and their interviews and stuff can tell me what Kit's opinion was of the ending. Did he like it? Did he think that that was good? Did he hate it? So if anybody knows about that, leave a comment down below. Uh, but yeah, I mean... I think part of the idea with him being involved is that hopefully he is involved because he's not happy with how they erased his character. Jon Snow, as of season six, was giving impassioned speeches to Danny about the need uh, to go north and fight the walkers and how important it was. He was talking to Davos about leadership and why Danny was a good queen. Danny was earning his respect. There was stuff happening with Kit Harrington's character in season six. But if you look at season seven and eight, his dialogue gets really short and clipped. He becomes kind of an empty vessel that's just, a, you know, moving the plot forward. Uh, and again, this is what I would call bad writing by D&D. &D. Uh, but hopefully Kit's involved because he's not happy with his character getting erased in the last couple seasons. And he wants to go back to really, um, you know, give this character some grit. And last bonus suggestion I have is what if this goes the way of Elric of Melnibene? where John becomes sort of a wandering ex-king, sellsword, magician, semi-violent rage type person. This could be interesting. If you know Elric of Melnibene, one of George's huge influences, it's written by Michael Moorcock, then you know what I'm talking about. But basically, Elric is an ex-king who sort of walks away from his throne and just goes, he becomes a sellsword and wanders around and has adventures and thinks very dark thoughts about his own kingdom and... Uh, nobility and the Melnibonaeans and all that stuff. So if John, if they want John to go to Essos and explore his connection to the Targaryens and to dragons, then this could be, you know, something like that. It's almost like the Witcher. Honestly, the Witcher concept comes from Elric in large part. Uh, Elric definitely wanders around fighting monsters, essentially. So you could see John the Witcher kind of uh, 
you know, not exactly, but you know what I'm saying. So there you go, guys. Those are my thoughts on the Jon Snow show. Leave your comments with uh, your clever nicknames, what you think it might be called, what you think of my ideas here, or just vent your rage if you need to. This is a safe place. We're pro Danny here, so vent away. And in case you missed it, I dropped a new Rainier video uh, just yesterday, so check that out. And I'll see you again real soon with more Song of Ice and Fire, House of the Dragon, Game of Thrones, Jon Snow show content, etc. 